I think one of the most emotionally powerful arguments against the existence of God is the problem of evil. I think the problem is that you don't understand the question. People will say that if God is all-knowing, all-powerful, and all-good, why does evil exist? No, we say why did an all-good God create evil? I see you're going to straw man this one. And while I am an activist for my endangered species, I do recognize that we are endangered because when someone creates one of us, the straw man is usually a moron who completely misrepresents the opposition. Maybe it just makes more sense to say that God does not exist. No maybe about it. It does make more sense to disbelieve the concept of an all-good God creating evil. We call that a paradox. But I don't think this argument succeeds. And one key to understand that is to ask the question, what is evil? Evil is any action taken to willfully cause unjust harm. Evil can't just be pain or things we really dislike, because that's what suffering is. And if evil and suffering have the same definition, then evil is a redundant concept. They don't have the same definition. Evil causes suffering. For example, when fundamentalists attempt to inject creationism into science class, this causes the student's education to suffer and is therefore an evil action. Or when fundamentalists seek to deny equality to fellow human beings, this causes those they would deny equality to to suffer and is therefore evil. Rather, I think evil just occurs when things aren't the way they are supposed to be. No, no, that's not correct. The concept of supposed to be is purely subjective. For example, I think religion is supposed to have been abandoned long ago when we entered the scientific era and started gaining a better understanding of the world and universe. Does this make religion evil? No. What makes religion evil are the actions of religious organizations and people who seek to usurp ethical and equality-driven secular authority and instill dogmatic authority sourced from archaic superstitions and mythology. But if the opposite of evil or good are the way things they're supposed to be, if things are supposed to be a certain way, that implies there's a design or a plan for the entire universe. You're right, it does, which is why your definition of evil is entirely biased. This is called an equivocation and it is fallacious. While my definition of evil may be my own, I do not believe someone could call it an equivocation because it encompasses any action that willfully causes unjust harm, not just religion's actions. In it we can include murder, theft, rape, abuse, oppression, injustice, and so on. But it also allows for circumstantial events such as killing in self-defense when necessary with the stipulation of unjust harm. Your definition only allows one to lead to where you are taking it, to the idea of design and therefore designer. This is what we call intellectual dishonesty. And that would imply there's a designer or a planner or God. Isn't logic and critical reasoning fun? I accurately predicted your path of logic using your fallacious arguments. In short, I told you so. So evil, rather than showing God does not exist, I think serves as indirect evidence that God does exist, and he has a plan or design for the universe that evil goes against. No, if your God is the all-knowing and all-powerful creator of all things that has a plan, that means he created the evil too, which would also mean that the evil is part of his plan, not the opposition to it. And that God can ultimately redeem us from evil. No, which means your God is supposed to be able to rescue us from his own creation. So if you'd like to learn more about this important argument, I recommend picking up a copy of my book, Answering Atheism. No, I think I've heard enough of your important argument. I find it lacking, to be honest. However, I am interested in your book. Why don't you tell me more about it? Available from Catholic Answers Press. Thank you. Let's take a look at your book. Oh my, it's available in both book and ebook form. And look, you're charging for it. $16.95 for the book and $9.95 for the ebook. And if I'm willing to pay, it's also available in three other formats. I certainly do not fault you for trying to earn a living and charging for your work. However, I do fault you for selling such intellectually dishonest and fallacious nonsense. Your title includes How to Make the Argument for God Using Logic. But you're using logical fallacy, which is the exact opposite of logic, pretty much. You're lawyering an argument for God. Yeah, I stole that comparison from Anne Raw, what of it? You're not seeking to expose truth, but to convince people that your opinion is correct. 
So let's go back to my definition of evil for a moment. You are willfully using dishonesty and fallacious arguments to try to help your readers make the argument for God. If your readers actually attempt to do this via YouTube, for example, and even the slightest bit of criticism is applied to their arguments, those arguments will be completely destroyed, causing public embarrassment and shame on a global scale. Yeah, the internet is a global phenomenon. This is harmful to them. So therefore, by my definition of it, your book is evil.